Hello, I'm Sabetta Matsumoto. In this video, we'll be looking at the calculus of polar coordinates and how we can use it to derive Newton's laws in systems with circular symmetry. Let's start with a point P here. In Cartesian coordinates, it is x units along the x direction and y units along the y direction. Its position can be written in coordinate form as x comma y. We can also express the position of P in polar coordinates. It is a distance r from the origin and is at an angle theta with respect to the x-axis. So in polar coordinates, P is located at position r comma theta. P measures a distance r cosine theta units in the x-direction and r sine theta units in the y-direction. In polar coordinates, it is a distance the square root of x squared plus y squared units in the r direction and arctan y over x units in the theta direction. We're not often going to be using the coordinate version of polar coordinates. Instead, we'll be using vector notation. This looks very redundant in Cartesian coordinates. Here, p is x units in the x hat direction and y units in the y hat direction. So what does p look like in polar coordinates? Well, first we'll have to define what the unit vectors r hat and theta hat are. r hat is the unit vector in the r direction. To get a unit vector, we take any vector, in this case it's the vector r, and divide it by its magnitude. This is the r hat direction. In Cartesian coordinates, it's cosine theta units in the x hat direction and sine theta units in the y hat direction. So what about theta hat? Since polar coordinates are orthogonal, we know that theta hat everywhere must be perpendicular to r hat. This is the theta hat direction, and theta hat is equal to minus sine theta in the x hat direction plus cosine theta in the y hat direction. From this, we can show that P has no component in the theta hat direction, but measures distance R in the R hat direction. So in polar coordinates, P is equal to R times R hat. To do physics, we need to understand the trajectory that particles take. So we want to look at what happens to P as a function of time. The first derivative of P gives us the velocity of P. That is, the velocity of p is the time derivative of the position r times r hat, where this is our definition of r hat. Using the chain rule, we get r dot times r hat plus r times r hat dot. So what is this r hat dot? To find out, let's look at p at time t1 and a position a little while later at time t2. Not only does the position p change, but the direction that its position vector points in changes too. It started here and ended here. So the difference between the directions is rotated by angle delta theta. So the change in unit vectors delta r hat is equal to delta theta in the theta hat direction, or in the limit that the time between t1 and t2 goes to zero, r hat dot is equal to theta dot times theta hat. We can equivalently show this relation using calculus by directly taking the derivative of the unit vector r. We get that r hat dot is equal to minus sine theta times theta dot in the x hat direction plus cosine theta times theta dot in the y hat direction. And from our definition of what theta hat is, we show that this is equal to theta dot times theta hat. Thus, the velocity of p is given by r dot times r hat plus r times theta dot times theta hat. The velocity in the r direction is simply the rate of change of p in the r direction. Likewise, the tangential velocity is given by r times its angular velocity, omega. To calculate the acceleration of p, we need to take another derivative, and again, we'll do this using the chain rule. The first term differentiates to r double dot times r hat plus r dot times r hat dot. The second term differentiates to r dot times theta dot plus 
r times theta double dot in the theta hat direction plus r times theta dot in the theta hat dot direction. We know that r hat dot is equal to theta dot times theta hat. And by using an equivalent argument, we can show that theta hat dot is equal to minus theta dot times r hat. If we collect terms in the r hat and theta hat directions, we get that the acceleration of p is given by r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the r hat direction and r theta double dot plus 2r theta dot in the theta hat direction. In the special case where r is constant, p is traveling in a circle. Then its acceleration is given by minus r theta dot squared in the r hat direction plus r times theta double dot in the theta hat direction. Or we can write it in a slightly more familiar way. Here, minus r times omega squared we know as centripetal acceleration. And in the angular direction, we get r times alpha, which is our tangential acceleration. Since the force acting on a particle causes it to accelerate proportionately to its inertial mass, m, we can express the radial force as m times r double dot minus r times theta dot squared. And the angular force is m times r theta double dot plus 2 times r dot times theta dot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.